the presence of the Lord for being so faithful and being here. Would you stand on your feet with me, please, tonight? And let's, let's agree in prayer. <laughs> we didn't come to church, but we've gathered a part of the church, yes. part of the local body. And thank you all for being here today. And <clears throat> I pray it was a great day for you. I'm sure it was warm enough for you. Those of us that were outside, it plenty warm. Father, we thank you tonight so much. Let's just lift our hands. The Word tells us, he said, I would that men and women would pray everywhere, lifting hands, holy hands unto God in prayer without wrath and without doubting. No wrath, no doubt. Thank you, Father. We worship you and we praise you right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise and worship is the highest form of spiritual warfare there is. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We praise you and we worship you and we thank you so much for your goodness, your kindness to us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for cleansing us. Thank you for the promises of God in Christ Jesus. Come on, let's praise him and let's worship him. Let's present ourselves to him. Let's bring ourselves to him, burdens and all. Cast our burden, cast the care, cast the, the load of the care on him. On to him, give it to him. Commit our souls to him, Peter said commit ourselves to him we're committed to Jesus help us Lord grow in our commitment to you long term in the good bad and ugly in the dangerous we thank you tonight for the Holy Spirit that empowers us to be committed we honor you we honor one another that empowers us to stay faithful stay committed to Jesus thank you Lord Thank you for the word, Lord. We come before it reverently. We open the written word tonight with reverent hearts, Lord. We declare Jesus Christ is Lord over this house, over our lives. By faith, we declare his lordship over our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great, 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 greats to come. If Jesus tarries. Lord, we ask tonight in Jesus' name, according to John 15, 7, that if we ask anything in your name, we have it. We know it is your will that revelation knowledge come forth tonight in our midst. We believe we receive right now revelation knowledge. We believe we receive right now healing for our bodies. We believe right now we are healed in Jesus' name. We have to believe we receive. That's the whole kicker right there. We have to believe we take it. Are you ready? We believe right now for healing. We take healing right now by faith. Ain't got to feel nothing. This ain't a feeling thing. It's a faith thing. I believe I am healed. I believe I am set free. I believe I am victorious. I believe I have victory now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I receive victory in Jesus' name. We receive victory. We receive good numbers on good reports in Jesus' name. We receive the report of the Lord. Whose report will I believe? I receive the report of the Lord. In Jesus' name. In his name I say we are healed. In his name we say we are healed. In his name we say that we are loosed from the hand of the devil and from all of his works. We're healed. We're delivered. We say in the name of Jesus because of his character, his authority, his finished work that is enough. We are the healed of the Lord and we say so. Father, we thank you that we believe your word that all things are working together for our good right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, take your mind. If your mind's trying to listen to Goliath, get it off Goliath. Focus your attention 
on the goodness of God, on the finished work of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our soul will respond to what we give attention to. Our body will respond to the soul that responds to what we give attention to. Thank you, Lord, for victory. We expect lives to be touched tonight when we gather in the presence of Jesus, in his name, around his word, which is him. That where two or three of us are gathered in that name, you are here in our midst. We worship you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? amen. Let's get right into it tonight. Proverbs 18.10. We won't mess around. We'll just dive right in. Proverbs 18.10. We, we looked at this scripture Sunday morning. I'd like to stay on it tonight, and then we might just get on it this Sunday too. Just stay with it for just a little bit. Let's look at Proverbs 18.10 in the New King James or whatever translation you have, but I'll read from that. And then we want to um, go to John 15. And then we're going to go over to 1 John 5. And we're going to look at a couple of scriptures in Job. And then we're going to tie it all up in Psalm 91. And I believe it'll make a little sense once we get to Psalm 91. Uh, what it means to he that dwells in the secret place. I tell you, you can occasionally visit, and I hope, and maybe sometime because of the mercy of God, if you can get a hold of mercy, you can even you can get delivered, and you can experience breakthrough, and you can experience a lot of good things, even if you just occasionally visit the 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 the, the secret place of the Most High. But life is different when you learn how to live there and how to dwell there, how to how to live in the secret place. You, you know what I'm saying? He that lives, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, he shall abide, live under the shadow of the Almighty. It's important. Don't, don't, Jason, don't wait until you feel like praying. You, you intentionally make an appointment with God. You make the appointment with the Lord. Don't wait till you feel his presence to, to move you to prayer. You make the appointment with the Lord. The doctor don't call you and say, hey, what do you think about? You call the doctor. You make an appointment. Well, you make an appointment with the Lord. And you, you set that appointment. Begin, begin even more to practice his presence. We do a lot of practicing the presence of the Lord. Just get some worship music, preferably music that doesn't have any words to it so your mind's not caught up in other people worshiping the Lord. There's a time for that. But get some, get some instrumental music that just forces you to just listen and just move your soul, move your spirit and begin to pray and praise and pray in the spirit to God. And remember when you're in prayer, you're saying words. Don't just, don't, don't just rattle. You know what I'm saying? Don't just rattle. You're saying words. You're talking to God. He that prays in an unknown tongue prays and speaks to God. You can talk to God, saints. Think about that. Isn't that something? He doesn't speak to men. And this is another thing you need to remember because your head tries to get so busy when you go to prayer, especially praying in the Spirit. And it's, it was real breakthrough for me when I remembered, and I would consciously think that when my mind would try to, well, I'm not hearing anything. Well, I'm not feeling nothing. Well, I don't feel the presence of the Lord. I, well, I don't have to feel the presence of the Lord to make the word true. He didn't say, when I pray and I feel something, God's listening. Are you with me? You have to remember, your mind is unfruitful when you're praying in the Spirit. And the soul, the unrenewed part of the soul, it wants in on the business. It's always being nosy. It wants to know, wants to reason, wants to understand. There's just some things the natural mind cannot understand. And so when you're praying in the Spirit, remember that. My mind is unfruitful. I don't have to understand it. I don't have to feel anything. Jesus done felt it and says it's finished. <laughs> Are you with me tonight? So, so let's go Proverbs 18.10. Let's look at that scripture again. The name of the Lord. Now, this is the old covenant here. This Lord here would be Jehovah is what it would say. And if it was New Testament, which the principle is still new, 
lordship has been transferred to Jesus. We all understand that. The name, the Father, gave him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, Philippians 2 tells us. So in the new covenant, we'd say the name of Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous run to it. What's it? The name. And they are saved. Safe there in Hebrew literally translates. They are. Uh, it w it would mean to to lift on high or set on high, lift above. And I'm telling you, the name here would be the presence of the Lord. We're going to look how it translates to the love of God, the presence of God. If you're in the presence of the Lord, you're in the presence of love because God is love. Huh? So when you're learning how to live in the presence, when you run to the presence of God. Run to the Word of God. God and His Word are one. You cannot separate the two. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the next few verses says the same was in the beginning with God, and without the Word was nothing made that was made in Him. In the Word was life, and that life that comes from the Word was the light of men. <coughs> and the Word still given life to men. It's, it's enduring life. It's eternal life. It, it, it's, it usurps the soul. Yeah. It's spirit life. Remember John 6, 63? My words are spirit and they are life. Well, that ties to Proverbs 4, verse 20 to 24. My son, bend your ear to my words for they are life to those who find them and health, Hebrew word marpe, medicine to all their flesh. The word, the scriptures, are medicine. That's how you take God's medicine. You, 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 you put them before your eyes and you begin confessing them. The Bible says that a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Bible says that, that a wholesome tongue promotes healing. Isn't that good? I want to encourage in this. This is kind of going off the side here, but I just keep, keep hearing it in my heart, so I'll say it. But Many times, right when you feel like cracking, it's just a principle. Breakthrough is right there. Because the enemy comes for the word's sake. You got to remember that it's not personal. It's just business with him. It's not personal. He really don't give two cents about you. You know that. I mean, he don't or me. But he does give two cents about you getting word in you because when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. Truth. Not opinion, not tradition, not man's oral doctrines and traditions passed down generation after generation. But the truth will make you free. And so that's how you begin to take God's medicine. The Bible says a righteous man will te teach his mouth how to talk. You got to learn how to talk right. <laughs> Isn't it true? You have to learn how to talk. You can listen to somebody. You can talk to somebody for less than 60 seconds and you can locate where they're at in their talk life. And what their talk life is like is a manifestation of their heart condition. So, but it's also important to remember when you're talking about redemptive realities. I'm talking about poverty, eternal separation or death from the presence of God, separated from the presence of God. That would be the Bible word death. And when we're talking about healing, those are settled forever. There's a record in heaven, and it is God's will that you not be in poverty, impoverished, it is not God's will for any human to be separated eternally from him forever. That's death. Don't think physical death. Death is not uh, the cessation of life. It's separation from life. And it is not God, God's will that you be sick or diseased, diseased. Not God's will. Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And I would ask anybody to show me one place in the Bible where the sick came to Jesus. And he said, listen, nope, it's God's will for you to be sick. 
you're bringing glory to God. Many people are going to come to me through your sickness. Now listen, you hear these things because the soul has to have something to anchor on. And if truth is not your anchor, the word is not your anchor, then reason will be your anchor. And you'll be blown around with every wind of doctrine, see. Just, you'll be blown around with what, 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 uh, what pacifies your feelings at that point. And then you'll begin justifying it, you know. So you get all these crazy things in, in, in funerals like God needed another rose in his garden. I ain't even read about a rose garden in heaven. I'm sure they're there, but he hadn't said it, and he sure didn't say it was made up of children. And so, you know, they say, well, you know, I, they're up there uh, setting the marriage supper table. Well, you don't know that. You, nobody, know, listen, we've, we've, I don't want to pop any bubbles or nothing, but we shouldn't have a bubble if we can't back it with the word anyway. Maybe it needs popped. But people, people get all kinds of crazy ideas about, well, you know, I tell you if so-and-so was here, what he'd say. Well, you don't know what he would say. And, and so the, we can't assume, you know, uh, my dad, Tom Sturt, he loved to fish. I tell you, I guarantee you right now he's at that river life just to fishing. Well, it, he's not. You can't assume these things. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be with the Lord, present with the Lord. That's all it says. And we, we've got to be careful that we don't try to make up what we think with the Lord is. The Bible talks about until the resurrection of many, 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 many souls under the altar of heaven. Resting. I got everybody's attention now. Yeah. We don't, we have to make sure that we don't just, just put our spin on what we think it is. See what I'm saying? Just, just leave, huh? to comfort yeah it ought to be enough comfort just knowing they're with the Lord well what are they doing I don't know but if they're with Jesus they're fine <laughs> are you with me but we can't we can't assume oh I guarantee you boy I tell you he's a probably a whooping and a whooping on that steed stallion right now going through them green fields of heaven. he may I just can't I can't prove that from the word that that's what somebody's doing right it just says to be absent from the body, so you're not the body. You're you. You can, Elvis can leave the building, right? But it is to be present with the Lord. And if they're playing tiddlywinks or crocheting quilts, if they're with Jesus, they're fine. Are we okay with this? It's just important. You, 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 don't, you don't ever want to try to comfort somebody with something you can't back from the Word. Because then when they say, show me that, you're going, me, 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 me. see? So we just have to leave the word alone. We don't add our assumption to it. But thank God we do know that any child that has left their body is with the Lord. David under the old covenant. Boy, we didn't plan on getting here, but we're running to the strong tower right now, see? Uh, David in the old covenant when paradise which was called Abraham's bosom which was in, in a holding place in the midst of this earth there's many holding places hell is one holding place Okay, Tartaru is one holding place or Sheol uh, there's many Abraham's bosom was there there's lots of holding compartments in the, in the midst of the earth Abraham's bosom was one where the righteous went when they, what, the, what we would call died, left their body. They went to Abraham's bosom to be comforted. They were carried by the angels there. The Bible tells us that. <clears throat> there was a great gulf that is, was fixed that separated Abraham's bosom from this place of torment. <clears throat> The people in Abraham's bosom could look across and see what was going on over there. The people in utter, utter, uh, utter torment could look across and see what was going on over there. Jesus told a story about it. And he said, he yelled across to Abraham. And, he, and listen, this is what's so wild. Those ones in utter torment still have all feelings at work and all thinking faculties. And they know because he said, Father Abraham. He knew who that was. 
huh? He said, go tell my kinfolk. This, biblically, we could say this is the one thing that any person that would ever go to hell, well, you have to be careful with that, that don't receive Jesus and believe he is the Christ, the Son of God, and in his lordship, okay? Not a certain sin. He's, this is what they would cry out. Tell my kinfolk, don't ever come here. That's what the one in hell would tell you, according to the Bible. Do not come to this place. And he hollered out and he said, go tell my kinfolk, don't come here. And he said, and, and, under the old covenant, he said, they have the law and they have teachers. Let them hear them. They said, no, but if, if I was to come back from the dead and tell them they'd believe, he said, if they won't believe the written scriptures and won't believe Moses, they won't believe you. But I'm just saying, you can leave your body. But it is not God's will for us to be sick, to be diseased. Well, why doesn't he do something about it? He has. So now it's a learning what he did for me and learning how to receive. And there's been many times, listen to me, that I was believing for healing. And I don't mind just telling you the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I mean taking all the medicine I could find, man. And, and, and still just sick as a dog. And, and, but listen, you have to, you grow to the place where it's no longer a challenge up here of whether the word is true or whether this is really working or not. You, you just fight. You know what I'm saying? When you're in a fight, it don't matter if you're getting, 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 getting whopped back. That just comes with it sometimes. But you don't give up and say, well, maybe I shouldn't throw any licks. Or am I, you see what I'm saying? Just because just just cause you're getting popped a couple times too. But you get better at it where you don't get popped as much. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. <laughs> then you learn how to take the first pop. Maybe you don't get popped at all. <laughs> I'm just making a comparison. But you, you learn how to fight it, but how to also settle in your inner man. The Word of God is true, and I am healed. Um, so it's not God's will that we, we, any of us, any human, but, but especially a believer, the one who has received redemption, be impoverished. Huh? Be, anybody be, it's not God's will for anybody to be separated from him. He is love. He's not so many of the things that, that maybe as a child you were taught he was. He is love. The Bible says he, he is love. He is light. He is grace. He is truth. Huh? He didn't bring the torment. He didn't bring the pain. He didn't steal your loved ones. Come on, y'all. And it's so good. One thing I remind myself of, and, and, and I think it's worthy of counsel when we counsel people, is uh, it's, it's hard to claim the, the, the provisions of Jesus, but yet practice violating natural laws. It's hard to say no weapon formed against me will be able to prosper and then me try to go out there and hook the electric. Me say, I don't need digger. Who needs digger's diamond electric? <laughs> I'll hook it up. Yeah, and, and we may be, you know, in prayer for another resident pastor. <laughs> uh, it'd kill me. I don't know what I'm doing. So there I'm claiming the, the spiritual side of it, but I'm violating the natural side of it. And, and it's amazing one, one guy was telling me, you know, God took this one, God took that one, God took this one, God took that one. We went over all four of them stories, and I said, wasn't well, it something? I said, the ones who don't practice violating natural laws, God doesn't take near as many of them. Huh? How come God isn't taking near as many of them? That Are you here with me, somebody? Well, it's because God ain't taking them. God has sent one man to hell in all of eternity. That was Jesus. God made him sin. He didn't even force it on Jesus. Jesus said, I will go. But there come a point that God laid, literally laid the, 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 the nature, the mother itself, sin on Jesus, and he became that, and on the cross, we know the moment it happened, he said, my God, you have left me. At that moment, life left him. Not living, but the spirit of life left him, and he was now separated from God and said, my God, you have left me. King James says, why have you forsaken me? He literally said, you have left me. So it's not God's will that anybody, I think it's important that we remember 
are we conscious again tonight that the entire world, all your sinner friends, I don't care what kind of sinful condition they're in, they are redeemed as far as the mind of God is concerned. The only confession they need to have knowledge of and say is, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe God raised him from the dead. At that moment, they are born again. There is no sin they have to confess, nowhere in the Bible. The sinner is never told to confess his sins. Huh? Ever. The sinner is never told to confess his sins. He's told to receive Jesus. Here was Saul of Tarsus, the serial killer. Here was his confession. Lord, what would you have me do? Totally committed himself to God right there. And Jesus never said, you need to confess all your sins. When Saul, who became Paul, when he later, years and years later, said, Lord, I killed so many of your people. I wreaked havoc on your churches. I, I, I hauled them to prison. Men, women, I, I killed them. Jesus never even responds back to that statement. All he said was, make haste and follow me. And I'm going to tell you, when you try to bring your past sins up to the Lord, I'm telling you, it is not him or his spirit or his voice that keeps rehashing these old old pitfalls you've lived in. It's not his voice. You won't find Jesus nowhere in his word responding, saying, I know you did. It, and it, Oh, it was terrible. I know you was a bad, bad boy. I was making a list and checking it twice. There's lots of years you didn't get no good because of it. It's not him. Just not in there. Jesus is always looking forward. He's not pointing you back. He's all, I, come on, follow me, follow me. But Lord, I make haste, follow me, follow me. Hmm? Paul said, one thing I've learned, one thing. Man wrote most of the New Testament, and he still said, one thing, I, I've got this, I've learned this. Forgetting those things which are behind and looking unto the things that lie ahead. It's interesting and worth bringing out. The word forget in Greek does not mean to never have a thought of it. It means to focus the attention off of that and on something else. One thing I've learned, to pull my attention from that and focus it on the things that lie ahead. Isn't that wonderful? Um, and it's interesting, you can tie that to uh, Joseph, who was one of the younger sons of Jacob. Remember the 12 sons? I think Benjamin was the only other younger one. He was the youngest. Joseph, uh, he became prime minister. We doing all right tonight? Joseph became prime minister. He went from Seg, F wing of Seg, the last cell on the block, to prime minister in 24-hour period. Now, he didn't, he didn't, his whole progression was not overnight. He spent almost 17 years in Seg. But God was growing him, and God was allowing him to, to learn things and be taught. And he started stewarding over a small ranch. Then he became steward over the, over the jail. Then he became steward in Seg and over the entire prison. That takes time learning how to do things like that. But the anointing of God was teaching him how to do it. Are you here with me? Huh? So, so he's learning these things. And then, then the gifts of God are, he's interpreting dreams for the butler and the baker. And, he, and, then, and then Pharaoh, he, he's interpreting things. And then, and, but, but listen, when, when the destiny clock hit, hit the certain time and the hand of the eternal clock hit that time, Joseph went, came from Seg and he was prime minister in less than 24-hour period, literally a 12-hour period according to their their time uh, and he had two children Manasseh and uh, Ephraim this is what I'm talking about forgetting those things moving my attention forgetting those things think about Paul we're talking about he said forgetting those things that was all the people he killed in his past life and the wreaking havoc on the church and focusing on the things of head now you tie that to an Old Testament picture Joseph he has Ephraim and he has Manasseh I forget which one was first but this is what's interesting the first one uh, the name means <clears throat> huh I want to just read it to you just stay with me just for a sec will you I want to read it right, 
right, just right to you. It's in my other Bible. But anyway, the first son, the name means, the name means that God has caused me to forget the toil in my father's house. Now you tie that way years ahead where Paul said forgetting those things. And the second child's name means to go, go on and prosper into the things uh, uh uh, that are ahead and you take that years ahead where Paul said focusing on the things that lie ahead so th there's a principle in that how many of you know it's hard to go forward I'm talking about from experiential knowledge here it's hard to move forward if the devil can just keep you uh, strangled in your mind over what you did anybody else live there I mean just and we should not be conscious of our sin I think I think so important I want to just step in here to the marriage side right quick it's so important that we as spouses say things that help bring our spouse out as spouses Words should not be said that empower the hurt. And sometimes you don't even mean to empower it, but what you're saying is making, making them more conscious of the fall and the hurt than it is their liberty and their cleansing. Are you here, anybody? So, um, moving right along, but the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous... There, that's me. The righteous run into it. So the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The name is a strong tower. The righteous run to it. Don't run from it. Run to it. Hmm? Say run to it. Run to it. And they are safe. They are lifted high. They're lifted above the threat. Come on. They're lifted above the accusation. They're lifted above the guilt, above the blame, above the sin. Huh? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The name is. And remember, we're not talking about letters, J-E-S-U-S -S or G-O-D or J the name. Well, we, that's why we, we're digging into, the, into this thing. What is the name? Because it's so much more than just letters. How do you run to the letters J-E-S-U-S? -S? How, do how do you run into the name? So it's got to be more than letters. Hmm? Bible talks about his banner over me is love. See? So let, let's go right quick to John 15, please, 9 and 10. I'm telling you, when we get to 1 John, we're going to, I want to read something that is so accurate that just changes something for the good 
that most translations are not translated that way. John 15, verse 9 and 10, please. Aren't we in a wonderful place as a family? <laughs> verse 9, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. That'd be a good place to just start believing that's true. That Jesus loves me as much in the same exact way that the Father loves him. Say, Jesus loves me to the same degree that the Father loves him. <clears throat> I also have loved you. Now watch what he says. Live in my love. And again, I don't want you just at first thinking, live out 1 Corinthians 13. Do love. Because you cannot genuinely do 1 Corinthians 13 till you're experiencing 1 Corinthians 13 from love himself. Otherwise, you are making it mechanical and you're doing it with a drill team smile on your face, which is religion. Come on, somebody. Huh? And like I said Sunday morning, we should not as born again, spirit filled, resurrection life, we say in the word of God says live in us. We should not have to be living with a drill team smile. Living with a fake smile. That is straight up religion is what that is. So he says, live in, that's the Greek word, en, and that means fixed in. Live fixed in my love. That's living in this love. And there he's talking about manifest. This is what we could call it working grace. We could call it manifestation of the spirit of grace, living in this zone. Are you here? Living in this zone. The Bible talks about, Job would say it this way, living in the hedge of protection. Come on. Living in this place of love. Live in my love. And look what he says in verse 10. You're here with me, right? If you keep my commandments, now very important, don't think 613 Old Testament Torah commandments. Those aren't his commandments. The New Testament commandment is, John 13, 34, and 35, love one another as I have loved you. Notice he said that after he said, live in my love. This is important. He didn't say verse 10 and then verse 9. He didn't tell us, do love and you will live in my love. He said, live in my love and keep my commandments. <laughs> if you keep my commandments, again, which is the one New Testament commandment, which is love, love, this is important too, we don't have time to teach it, but love one another. My love for the sinner looks different than my love looks to you. My love to the scoffer looks even way different. And the mocker. Come on, y'all. And it gets even real tight and holy when it's called your friend. That's a covenant word. Jesus called the 12 friends. I've called you friends because I've revealed to you everything my father's revealed to me. And he called one other man that in the garden. Judas kissed him and he said, friend, capital F, friend, is it with a kiss that you betray the son of man? That'll tell you what friend is. Yoke, fella. Well, if you keep my commandments, you will live in my love. So now there's the living side of keeping the commands of Jesus, which is love one another, and it would be anything the Spirit of God would lead you to do, which will always look like the written word, right? 
You will live in my love. There's the same thing as he's saying, the name is a safe place. You will live in my love. The name is a safe place. You're lifted on high in the safe place. Am I making sense? Here he's saying it this way, live in my love. That's the safe place. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and I live in his love. Now this is important. Just listen to this right quick. Jesus said, I live in my Father's love. Now I want you to just listen right quick. Living in the love, living in his present love, living in his presence, living living in the secret place, dwelling under the shadow. Am I making sense here? Listen to this. I'm just, I don't turn there just for sake of time. I'm going to read them to you right quick. You can write them down. John 7, 30, talking about Jesus. Therefore they sought to take him, but no one laid a hand on him because his hour had not yet come. They sought to take him, couldn't touch him. Verse 44. Now some of them wanted to take him, but no one laid hands on him. 8, 20. These words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. Are you here? 10.39. Therefore they sought again to seize him, but he escaped out of their hand. Not a hand on him. Not a hand on him. Not a hand laid on him. And they wanted to. They wanted to. They wanted to. They went to throw him over a cliff, and he walked through the midst of them. There's four examples. Right here's a a fifth one. He escaped out of their hand. That's living in the love. That's the secret place. That's that's the name because John 17 is going to tell us that that, that the Father kept him in the name. And then we're going to see where he says, I have kept them in your name. He didn't say in your name I kept them or by your name I kept them. He said, I kept them in your name. That's what living in the name looks like. They, the weapon form could not prosper. The weapon form could not prosper. The weapon formed could not prosper. When they strip you and God brings you back and promotes you even higher, that's living in the secret place. Are you here, somebody? And so we know by five, just five examples right here, that's the will of God. That's, that's good news. No one laid a hand on him. We're going to kill you. Live in the love. Stay in the love. First of all, you have to believe this. It's not just the doing of 1 Corinthians 13. It's first of all has to be backed by God loves me. God loves me. God defends me. God is my protector. That must. That is the muscle that, uh, that, that, that gives you the strength to do 1 Corinthians 13. If you don't know that God is not holding sin against you, it is going to be religious for you to try to not hold other sins against them. There's not going to be any empowerment to it. It's an act, and it is religion, and it is dead works. Right? Isn't that wonderful? So it has to start with God loves me. God loves me. God loves my family. God is for me. God is for me. Say that. God is for me. That has to be the muscle behind this thing. Either it lives in, It's either love that's given the muscle or it's the flesh, one of the two. And the flesh profits nothing. I don't even care if it's saying scripture. Come on. This is this has always been interesting to me. This is how you know if a yoke is really there or not. I'm not talking about when a season ends and God moves somebody on in the plan of God for their life, but that will be with peace and there will be a, an agreement there and there will be a, you're sowing them into the plan of God. This is interesting though, if the only thing that holds us together is what we do, we don't have nothing.
there's been people that I served with for years. And then listen, I'm several of them, okay? So don't try to pinpoint who I'm talking about. You don't know. Serve with them for years. Now listen to me. And they depart. And we never talk. Listen to me. What we were doing was the only thing holding us together. That's just truth. Isn't that something? That's worth thinking about. And it's a good question to ask yourself, what's holding us together? Is love the bonding agent, really? Or is it works? Is it serving that's holding us together? Because serving isn't what can hold us together. We're to serve. We're to, we're to serve because of love. But love is what holds us together. Whether we agree or not, we can agree to disagree and still walk in honor and still walk in agreement. You can disagree, but yet stay in agreement spiritually. Now, come on. But if what we're doing together is the only thing holding us together, we're really not together. See, that's, that's an important, it just, just something interesting. So he tells us we can run to the name, and that name, the name, that's the strong tower, and that's where I am safe. Can you agree to that? That's what he said. And then he tells us that we can live in this thing he calls love. Live in my love just like I've lived in my father's love. And we saw five examples of what living in the love looks like and where love defends you. Love defends you. Love keeps them from putting hands on you. Love keeps them from putting hands on you. Love keeps them from throwing you over the cliff. Why? Because the hour hadn't come. Your hour hadn't come. I'm going to tell you something. I believe the word teaches this, or I wouldn't say it, uh, um, if I will be sensitive to God if I will stay submitted to authority these are all Bible things okay if I will stay in honor toward my parents like them or not I, I love mine I'm saying if you like yours or not at least you can honor them honor is the attitude of your heart doesn't mean that they're right doesn't mean you're gonna uh, when you come to a certain age that you're gonna they're gonna have more voice into your into your life than your spouse does that has to change I don't take that to go down that road right now but <clears throat> you, you're you're doing what the word of God teaches you you're staying submitted and open you're correctable that's a big word you're correctable are you correctable are you correctable you're not easily offended these are huge, y'all. These are these are these are doors that allow that allow things to attack, and then believers want to come to the pastor and say, "Well, he said no weapon formed against me will prosper." He did say that. He also said, "Don't be quick to live in offense. Don't get, quit being touchy." He said, "Are you here? Don't be touchy. Don't be touchy. Touchy." So if you're doing the will of God, you're, you're in the will of God. And at this, you live in this place of quick to confess, quick to repent before God. The enemy cannot take your life. Listen to me. And I'm not saying everybody that goes is because the enemy took them. But listen, John the Baptist could not have his head cut off till he had finished his course on earth. Book of Acts tells us that. John finished his course. Then, listen, I can take my head. I'm going for it all. Because you can't hack the head off of his spirit. Now, you tie that to this. Tie that to this. Think of, think of, think of these things. Jesus said they could not lay their hands on him because his hour hadn't come. Now, once his hour had come, they arrest him in Gethsemane. They put hands on him. They beat him all night long. They beat him, huh? Drug him around like a sheep, put a rope around his neck, and they led him that way in humility. They crucified him. They did not. Why? Because his hour had come. But before that hour had come, no man could lay a hand on him. Come on, y'all. Am I making any sense with this? 
I'm saying no weapon formed against you can prosper in the safe place. No weapon formed against you can prosper living in that place of love of God loves me. God loves me. And I do love, but it's genuine. It's not religion. It's not, it's not an act. It's not dead works. It's not drill team smile. It's I do it because I know that's how God is toward me. I want to do it. Something compel, Paul said love compels me to do that. All right. Now let's turn right quick to watch this. We'll skip John 17. We may get on it Sunday. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. Y'all, this is a humdinger. Everybody knows what a humdinger is. I'm not sure what it means, but I think we all think it means it's like that, that's, that's the shiznit, man. That's, <laughs> right? That's the oh snap we're fixing to hear. 1 John 5, 18. Watch this. And then I'm going to read it to you from about two, three, four, five, six different very accurate translations. And this is going to set this scripture on fire. First John 5, 18. We know. I want you to read it with me, please. Ready? We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. Stop right there. That, that, that would disqualify us all. I'm born of God. How many of you know that Jesus is the Son of God? You've confessed that. You are born of God. Have you ever sinned since you... Okay, yeah. So that cannot be what he's saying because even John that wrote this had some flaws. That word means to continue and continue and continue practicing sin. It doesn't even mean... Oh, you do it and you're having a war between your head and your heart and God, you go back and you repent before God and then the cycle comes around you oh, know here's that war again and you fall and you go back it means just practicing it and practicing it. he said nobody born of God can do that the spirit the, 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 the born again spirit you won't allow you to without a war you got to drag your spirit there am I right so that's what he's saying so let's read it ready we know that whoever is born of God does not practice sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. Now, this is interesting. Under that translation, but he who has been born of God keeps himself. Jude verse 21 tells us, praying in the Spirit, building yourself up on your most holy faith. Next verse, keeping yourself rooted in the love of God. So praying in the Spirit, that's one of the first things it will be doing is helping you stay in the love of God. <laughs> Not those others that, you know, are just way out of the love of God. It's going to work on you first. <laughs> yeah. So there's keeping our, himself again. Now, and there's that safe place, right? He doesn't practice sin. But he who is born of God keeps himself. There's that safe place. He keeps himself. He, he guards himself. The Bible says guard your mouth. You'll guard your life. And the wicked one does not touch him. Now, when you look at the Greek, the words he who has been, right here, watch this. this is, if you don't want to learn something, just doze off for a second, but those you want to know something here, look at this. This is good. We know that whoever is born of God does not practice sin. But that word is there. These words, he who has been, is not there. We know that whoever is born of God does not practice sin. But born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. Let me read it to you from five from three and two others that are really good, but three very accurate translations. Are you still here? Listen, listen, listen to the complete Jewish Bible. We know that everyone who has God as his father does not go on sinning. On the contrary, the Son, capital S, born of God, that's Jesus, protects him. Ah! That's that hedge. We 
we know that he who has been born of God does not practice sin. The Son of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. Am I making sense here? <laughs> See, I guard myself. I keep myself living in the love, and the Son of God protects me, and the evil one does not touch me. Watch this. Tyndall Bible. Great Bible. He was burnt at a stake in England. And while he was burning in flames, the last thing out of his mouth was, Lord, I pray that, you, that your word would, would, would take over these nations. And listen, that's how, where the, the, the king wrote the King James Bible. Tyndall. We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning, for God's Son, capital S, holds them securely and the evil one cannot touch them. There's two accurate translations that both agree with that. Isn't that good? I keep myself living in the love, living in the name, living in the secret place, living in the word, living in the presence, trusting that God loves me. God protects me. God is for me. I don't have to promote me. God will promote me. Ask Joseph. Huh? Your gift will make room for itself. Bring you before great people. And what happens? The Son of God, Lord of the church, he watches over you. He protects you securely, and the evil one cannot touch you. Now listen to, listen to the Amplified. We know absolutely that anyone born of God does not deliberately and knowingly practice committing sin. But the one, capital O, who, capital W, was born of God, as Jesus, carefully watches over and protects the believer. Christ's divine presence within him, the believer, preserves him against the evil, and the wicked one does not lay hold or get a grip on him or touch him. Oh, it does? Okay, y'all. Listen to the message. We know that none of the God-begotten makes a practice of sin, fatal sin. The God-begotten are also the God-protected. The God-protected. Say, I'm the God-protected. <laughs> Listen to the Good News translation. Very good Bible. We know that no children of God keep on sinning. For the Son, capital S, Son of God, keeps them safe. Jesus keeps me safe. Now listen, a lot of that Jesus keeping us safe is going to be the Spirit of God saying, talk to this man. Don't pull out, don't pull out yet. Talk to this man. I'm, that's accurate, y'all. They that are led by the Spirit of God, that's the mature sons of God. I need to buy groceries here tonight. I need to go eat lunch right now. Man, I don't ever go this early. Go now. I need divine appointment. D divine appointment. That, that's him keeping you, protecting you. Come on. Sometimes, listen, you, you, you got to settle. We say this so many times, especially on vacation trips. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. Ah, we had a flat. My steps are ordered by the Lord. Well, God wouldn't cause a flat. Well, it's not evil. If an angel let all the air out of my tire to hinder me and stall me 45 minutes, it would have put me in a fatal accident down the road. He can let the air out of my tires if he wants to. I'm serious about that. If, if angels can take wheels off of Pharaoh's chariots, he can let air out of my tires if I need a flat to avoid a fatal crash. Are you with me, somebody? See, that's not me saying God would do something evil to it. There's nothing evil. That's protecting me. So a lot of, of a lot of the protection and keeping me in the safe place is going to be by the inward witness of the Spirit and what he's saying in there. That's why we must learn, number one, I can trust him. He's not ever going to hurt me. He's never going to lead me into sorrow, grief, pain, torment. I can trust him. See, that's live in my love. Do, do, do anything I lead you to do. Do anything I tell you to do. That's those commandments. Is that a powerful acknowledgement of a scripture? Now, let's end. Uh, oh, we got 14 minutes left. 
Jesus, you're good to us tonight. Time flies when you're having fun. We doing all right? Okay, you learning anything? I want this to be more of a teaching night. I don't, we're, we're treaching. We're teaching, preaching, treaching night. It's not teaching or preaching. It's treaching. <laughs> Is he a preacher or a teacher? He's a treacher. <laughs> treach on. Just treach on. I like this, just that we wrote it like this. The key to Jesus' great success in faith was his ability to depend totally on the Father's love. In the book of John alone, he said, my father, 32 times. Jesus was so conscious of his relationship with his heavenly father. And it's very important that we are conscious of a good relationship between us and our father. I was thinking about this. I was showering a while ago, and just for the sake of saying, I didn't even have to use hot water. <laughs> Cold water was warm enough. <laughs> it's hot out there. But anyway... We, uh, we had Rilo all day today, and, and we're going to have him tomorrow. And I took him fishing, took him to Walmart, let him pick out his rod and reel, and he picked a, uh, uh, it's an R2-D2. And some of you saw the video, he calls it, uh, Artie doo doo <laughs> I said, who, what rod do you want? He said, I like this one, Pop. He picked up like 70 lures in there, and he had pick up every one of them. Pop, do we need this one? I said, no, I you know, had like a, a beak that long go about 23 feet deep under the water. I said, no, we don't need that. Let's look at these. these let's get some little, uh, look, at, look at these. Bags. Pop, do we need this one? Pop, do we? I said, no. Let, but anyway, uh, he, he, he asked me earlier, and he asked us when he was swimming. He would swim, and I mean, he's just everywhere, but he's staying underwater and all the way across the pool now. And, but, but he come up, and the first thing he wanted to know is this, are you proud of me? Man, that hit me. And I'm telling you, I am so fed smooth up with born-again people, including myself at times. We still wonder, does God love me? And I mean just under the anointing, and I'm bold in the anointing. I fight my own battles once I'm out from under this anointing, just like you do. But in the presence of God under the anointing, you, there is no fear. I mean, the Word of God teaches that. Saul turned into another man when the anointing came on him for these things. But I fight the same fight of faith you fight. I fight battles. I fight torment. All those things. I'm better at it than I've ever been. But I, I'm, I'm just here to tell you, I'm on the same playing field you are, okay? These things don't leave because you, you're a pastor or something. But this, under the anointing of God and just in this presence, I want you to... Let's, let's begin to settle affirm again tonight. John 15, 9 and 10, the same way God loved Jesus, Jesus loves me. I am loved and I'm going to just step out here. If we're born again, all old things are passed away. Am I right? All sins are under the blood. Am I right? Yes, it's right. Then listen, we could say to every one of you by the word of the Lord, my son, my daughter, in whom I am well pleased. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> That's good news. Hallelujah. That's straight up Bible, man. It's just, it's, it's, it gets, it, it's, it's, we, this is, we're going into 2020. We cannot drag, come on, just some of the same old struggles into 2020. I've been pressing in my own life and kind of had a couple setbacks, one last week, and just a, a real small one, same thing, but just real, just, I mean, just a dip. You know, just, bloop, just, just a little pothole this time, but. I didn't like wreck out like I used to years ago. Anybody, you know what I'm talking about, just wreck out. I mean, just wreck out, camp out, pitch the tent. I'm here for a while. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, take a whole family with me. If I'm in the hall, everybody going to camp out here. <laughs> but, but I took it to the Lord. I said, Lord, I don't want to do that. that that's not right. That's, that's not right. I don't want to do that. that. That doesn't require faith. It doesn't require trust in you. I don't want to do that. Make any sense to anybody? <clears throat> anybody have anything you're pressing? And I mean, you're pressing to go beyond it. Come on. You're pressing to go beyond it. Yeah, man. That's a huge confession of faith when you can say, yes. 
Boy, I mean, you take the monster out of the closet. Yeah, I'm pressing. I'm not perfected yet. I'm dealing with something, but I'm dealing. Huh? Yea, though the, uh, the, they that walk uh, walk through the valley, they don't camp out. We walk through. Hallelujah. I want you to know tonight that the word of God tells us. He, we, he would say the same thing about us in Christ Jesus. My son, my daughter, in whom I am well pleased. Why? Because we're in faith. That makes me pleasing to God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. That means with faith, I can please God every time, 24-7, in faith. And it takes faith to say, God loves me. I just please God. I am pleasing to God in Jesus Christ. And I desire to be pleasing to God. I just please God. Why? Because I acted in faith. Look how easy it is to please God. Yeah, but you messed it. I confessed it. I pleased God by confessing it to him. Huh? That's right. Isn't it wonderful, y'all? Say, God's pleased with me. I mean, make your gum say it. God is pleased with me. Are you with me, somebody? He's pleased. Jesus satisfied the wrath of God. The Bible says God has not reserved any of us for wrath. Hallelujah. God is pleased with me. Why? Because I'm a faith man. By that I mean I'm in Christ. Not some faith giant. I just mean I'm a faith man. You're faith people. Now, I want to, where do we want to end? I forget, we got eight minutes left. Go to J there's so much. <laughs> I don't want to hold you longer than your, your, your soul can obtain. You know, once people are full, I don't usually know in this house at least when, when the majority, okay, the souls are full, let's close, let's go home. But I don't sense we're just brimming yet. Uh, okay, Job, right quick. Go to the book of Job. If you need a new job, go to the book of Job. <laughs> Go, go to the book of Job. That'd be right before Psalms, Job chapter 1. I want you to see something here right quick. Then we're going to end with Psalm 91. Remember, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. They live there, and they are safe. It didn't say no weapon wouldn't be formed. It just said it wouldn't prosper. See, they sought to take a hold of him, but no man laid a hand on him. They sought to throw him over the edge, but no man, he, he walked through the midst of him. They could not seize him. Why? His hour hadn't come. Isn't that something? Job chapter 1, boy, the book of Job, we'll teach on that someday. It's a powerful teaching. It'll change your theology. Uh, maybe some things you believe that maybe shouldn't be believed. But anyway, just want to bring a point out here tonight. It's interesting. Job is the son of Issachar, which is of Jacob, of Isaac, of Abraham. He's a great, great grandson of Abraham. <clears throat> it's written by the book of Job, according to scholars. Job wrote the book with the help of Moses. Job lived during the time of Moses during the wilderness. It's the first written, recorded book in your whole Bible. Job is the oldest written one, okay? Um, just interesting. Those are interesting points. But I want you to look at Job 1.6. Now, there was a day... When the sons of God, that's the fallen angels there, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan was among them. Verse 7, And the Lord said to Satan, From where did you come? Our, in Texas, it would sound like what you want. <laughs> so Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth. Remember First Peter says he roams to and fro. So see, he ain't changed a bit. From here, oldest book in the Bible, to 1 Peter 5. No new tactics. No new tricks. He said, from going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, this is very, you've got to catch this. Have you considered my servant Job? I've heard that all my church life. And the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? I mean, almost like sick him. That's not at all what was accurately said. The Hebrew says, have you set your heart on my servant Job? That's what God said. Have you set your heart on my servant Job? 
See, that's a whole lot different than, have you considered Job? I'll consider Job. No, he said, have you set your heart on Job? Because, have you set your, your heart on have you set your heart on my servant Job because there's no one like him in the earth? He's blameless, upright, and he fears God, and he puts away evil. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Verse 10, Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, around all that he has on every side? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are safe. He that live in my love, they could not put a hand on him. They could not put a hand on him. They could not throw him over the edge. They could not seize him. <laughs> Have you not? You made the hedge around him. Job didn't make that. Job don't even know there's a hedge. He just thinks this is what living for God looks like. That's the fact. This is important though. This hedge, which Proverbs, Psalms also, and scholars believe, and it sits, it's always set good in my heart, the angel of the Lord. That in the old covenant, that was Jesus. The, the angel of the Lord encamps round about those that fear God. That word in camp in Hebrew means the angel of the Lord pitches a tent and dwells on one's property that fears the Lord. That sounds like a hedge to me. This is interesting. Job didn't know there was a hedge. Job didn't talk much about a hedge. He just thinks this is what living for God does. You're just protected and blessed. Say, I'm protected and blessed. <laughs> Watch this. But Satan he's a spirit, saw there's a hedge. So in the spirit realm, he could see it. Job couldn't see it, but the Satan could see the hedge and God could see the hedge. So I'm saying this, you ain't got to see it for it to be there. <laughs> Am I right? Say there was a hedge on Job's life and there's a hedge on my life. Watch this. Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, around all that he has on every side? You've blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he'll surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has. Listen, he lives on earth. That's under your power. But don't you touch his person. They could not touch him. They could not touch him. They could not touch him. Anyway, I wanted you to see that. Now, look look at this. Ver oh, look at uh, 29 2. Job is in heavy grief. He's about to get interrupted by the Lord, and the Lord's going to teach him truth. He's going to convict the three religious, carnal minded friends that were telling Job all kind of false stuff about God. And God gets on to the three and said, You've told Job many things that are not true about me, and you've told him I'm doing things that I don't do and I did not do. And if you don't get Job to pray for you, you're never going to get your healing. That's why the Bible says Job prayed for his friends, because God commanded them three that had counseled him. And Job said, You're miserable counselors. Best thing they did, they sat for seven days in chapter two. They gathered around him. They sat for seven days and wept and mourned with him and didn't say a word. That's the best counsel they gave. And usually that's the best counsel you can give. You weep with them that weep. You rejoice with them that rejoice. Huh? But when they started talking, it was all religious, and the first one rebukes him. The second one says, if your kids wouldn't have been having them birthday bashes every year, that's the thing Job feared. He never feared his stuff being taken. That's what Job's heart meant when he said, it all belongs to God. It's just the King James translated that this way. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Job said that, but what Job's heart was was, listen, everything I have is God. If he wants it all, he can have it. But God didn't send the whirlwind and the fire and take all his stuff and burn his feet and kill his kids and do this. God didn't do that. And God ends up showing Job that. But one of them starts rebuking Job. One of them's cursing him for his mouth. The other one's telling him if you would live right. The other one's telling him if your kids would live right. That's always religion. Come on, y'all. If you would have just this or if you would this, if you would. It's always something you got to do. You're always chasing the carrot. 
instead of focusing your attention on what he did and has empowered me to do because of what he did. Religion's always out in front. It's trying to be right with God without the help of God, really. That's worth saying again. It's about trying to get right with God. Jesus made you right. We can't hear that enough. I invite sinner friends to church. Hey, man, just come to church with me. Y'all think you'll enjoy it. Oh, man, I got to get right with God. There's religion. Somebody's taught him that. He don't know to say that on his own. I got to get right with God. How are you going to get right with God? I'll tell you how. Receive Jesus. <laughs> oh, I just got to get righteous. Well, here's make it easy. Get born again. <laughs> Amen. In Christ, he's born again. Yeah, but I've sinned. That didn't ixnay you from being in Christ. We need to understand that. When your child misses, listen, when, 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 when my children messed up, I didn't say, that's it, out of the house. Don't you ever claim me as your daddy. You take, take my name from you. No, and dadgummit, that's not how the father teach it, treats us. Huh? Come on. We not taking this, these thoughts into 2020. We are done with this. Done with condemnation. Done with guilt. Done with blame. Done with got to get right with God. I'm right. You're right. Why? Because you received Jesus, the right one, the just one. Think of this. When you received Jesus, man, that clock says all four zeros. When you received Jesus, you, this is so huge. When you received Jesus, this is truth, y'all. When you received Jesus, that's the fourth time I've said that. Fifth time. When you received Jesus, I want you to get this. When you received, <laughs> hey, just say it. When you received Jesus, you received all that he is in his standing with the Father. You are joint heirs with him now. Think of this. You are not going to be more righteous when you get to heaven than you are right now as a born-again believer. I'd, I'd come to church, but I just got to clean my act up. How, how are you going to do that? Tell me. Because you're a spirit. If you could have, you would have already. I'm going to end with this. I want you to, to hear this. Psalm 91 from the Passion Translation, speaking of living in the name, dwelling in the love, living in that place of love. Are you with me? This is very important. The first two verses is David talking. Verse 3 to the end of the chapter, the speaker shifts, the speaker changes, and the Lord, the Word, starts speaking to David. It's interesting. You read several different Psalms do that. David will say one or two or three verses, and then the Lord will respond. The rest of the Psalm is with the Lord talking to him. So, We'll read this. You can read it out loud if you want, but it's just powerful. Watch this. David says, When you sit enthroned under the shadow, remember all that we've been talking about, living in that place, of Shaddai, that's Almighty God in Hebrew, you are hidden in the strength of God most high. He's the hope that holds me. David talking. We could say this. This is us talking. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me. Now listen, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The only God for me and my great confidence. Now notice, now the speaker's going to shift because he's going to say he'll rescue you. Now, this is the Lord responding, and we, this is talking to us too. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy. Talk to that guy. Don't go there. Hang on. 
No, don't, 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 don't get antsy because you ain't got there yet. You, 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 you see what I'm saying? Oh man, kids got to pee again. It's the fourth time we've peed on this. Hang it. Our steps are ordered. You just got to settle those things. Our steps are ordered. Our steps are ordered. We said we wanted to be there by two. Well, if we get there at two o two, it'll be fine. Well, what if we can't get as good as seats? They can have my seats. My steps are ordered. You have to bring it back to those things. My steps are ordered. My steps are ordered by God. We may lose the deal. God's got lots of deals. But my life is a bigger deal than getting the deal in the name of driving my... Uh-uh. My steps are ordered by the Lord. You can have the deal. It's that important. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy and he will protect you from false accusation and any deadly curse. I receive it. <laughs> Watch this. His massive arms are wrapped. Now, I like this because that's always present tense every time you read it. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under, they run to it. In the name of the Lord, strong tower of the righteous, run to it. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield keeping you. There's Shamar, there's that word keep again. Keeps him, the Son of God keeps him and no, the evil one doesn't touch him keeping you from harm. I receive it. I want us to say that after every verse. Okay, You will never worry about an attack of demonic forces at night. I receive it. Nor have to fear a spirit of darkness coming against you. I receive it. Boy, now the atmosphere is changing saying that every time. Don't fear a thing. I receive it. Whether by night or by day, Demonic danger will not trouble you, nor will the powers of evil launched against you. I receive it. <laughs> oh, it's getting good now. Watch this. Even in a time of disaster, with thousands and thousands being killed, you will remain unscathed and unharmed. Release your faith. I receive it. You will be a spectator as the wicked perish in judgment, for they will be paid back for what they have done. I receive it. That's just simply the law of sowing and reaping. Next verse. Watch this, y'all. <laughs> if y'all could only see Miss Cheryl right now. <laughs> She is, she is not allowing anxiety to come up in her heart right now. <laughs> it's okay. I got a Bible right here. That, we can listen. Oh, there it is. See? Glory to God. It didn't prosper, did it, Miss Cheryl? <laughs> All right, read it with me. Ready? When we live. See, that's important, y'all. That's what we've been talking about. When we live our lives within the shadow of God most high, we could say in living in his love, running to the strong tower, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm. There's a hedge on our life. There's a hedge on our property. Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> How then could evil prevail against us or disease infect us. I receive it. Ah, man, that's a bad scripture, boy. Come on, verse 10. Look at this, y'all. Isn't this wonderful? You, they took it out of the program? No. I'll read verse 10 to you. Oh, you know. Oh, that was 9 and 10. I was thinking, I ain't got 10 either. Everybody throw your passion Bibles. Away. Not really. It's nine and ten are together. Verse 11. <laughs> How dare the translator. Okay. 
end of the foolishness. Now back, we're, we're back serious now, ready? Verse 11, let's read it, ready? God sends angels, look at this, with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. I receive it. Come on. See, God's the sender of angels. He's the dispatcher. Next verse. If you walk into a trap, if you do, they'll be there for you, who, the angels, and keep you from stumbling. I receive it. Isn't that good, y'all? <laughs> James said if you fall into various trials, right? Next verse, look at this. You'll even walk unharmed among the fiercest powers of darkness, trampling every one of them beneath your feet as you're just living in love. Yeah, I receive it. Next verse, watch this. For here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you have delighted in me as my great lover, I will greatly protect you. <laughs> man, I feel that, man. I will set you in a high place. Listen, the, the righteous run into it and they are lifted up high. I will, set, I will set you. See, I ain't got to set me. I will set you in a high place and they are safe and secure before my face. I receive it. Man, that's good. That's good, good, good. I don't care who you are, that's good. <laughs> oh, man. Verse 15. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray. Come on. And you will find and feel my presence even in your time of pressure and trouble. I will be your glorious hero and give you a feast. I receive it. <laughs> Man, is that good or what? Ah, last verse, ready? You will be satisfied with a full life and with all that I do for you, for you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. Ready? I receive it. Golly, that's good. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Say, I receive full life. Hallelujah. Man, I'm we could do that again Sunday morning and just walk. Man, that's, that's, that's powerful. That's God's, that's God's will. That's what God said, and that's what we say. We receive it. Brother Bum, you may be seated for, give us five minutes, okay? Let's receive. I want, listen, I've had this in my heart. I, we're not buying from God, but you, faith is how you purchase from God. I want us to give our best to God tonight. I'm talking about, it ought to take faith, man. It ought to cost me something when I come before the king. You know what I'm saying? If I got $500 in my wallet for me to pull out a one, come on. A one's a lot if you're the woman with two, two, two mites. But I'm just saying, I want, I want us to bless God tonight. He blesses us. That's what he's doing for us, all that we read. And I want to honor him. Okay? Brother Bob. Yes, sir. We re I receive it. <laughs> you know, he is worth it. And when you look at... Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to start with verse 4 from the Passion Translation. But God still loved us with such great love, such mega agape. He is so rich in compassion and mercy. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, he united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace he raised us up with Christ the exalted one and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm here we go for we are now co-seated 
That means you look in the notes. That means to be placed or seated in heaven means that we have been given the perfection and authority to be there. We are co-seated as one with Christ. That is lifted on high. So when pastor talks about us doing our very best at this at this point when we we, we get to present the tithe to him and we get to sow seed. Now, maybe you're not the guy with the five crisp $100 bills in your pocket. Maybe you've got a five ones or maybe you've got a nickel. There are times when we encourage you to participate because the word says the whole lump is blessed. So whether you're dropping a nickel or five grand in that plate, your nickel is blessed with that five grand. That The blessing is on the whole lump. So participate. And if you got nothing, tie a piece of, tear off a piece of paper. Sow something in faith that shows, Lord, I recognize that you are the seed supplier. I'm a sower. You're a seed supplier. And right now, this is the seed I got, and I'm going to plant it. But participate. Be a part of it. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are our seed supplier, Lord. Father, you are the Lord of Lords, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that, oh, Jesus, you are our provider. Lord, that, Father, we love you, and therefore we are entitled to riches, honor, enduring wealth, and prosperity, Father. I thank you that you bestow wealth on us and you make our treasuries full because, Lord, we tithe. We set that that is holy before you. You rebuke the devourer on our behalf. I thank you, Lord, that in the rebuking of that devourer, there are weapons there that come against us we'll never see, we'll never be aware of. Lord, that little bit that we do see, we thank you that it's rebuked. You rebuke it. We don't have to make that happen. Your word is forever settled, and we depend on, we, we trust your word, and we thank you that you open the gates of heaven upon us. And, Lord, as we sow seed tonight, those that are sowing the widow's might, those that, that are sowing hundreds, even thousands of dollars, Lord, I thank you that entire lump, Father, I thank you that you're receiving the lump as a whole. No matter our participation, the whole is received. And your word, you're faithful to perform it on our behalf. And so it's blessed. That means it will be fruitful and it will multiply first to your glory. And, Lord, for our good so that we can sow more seed. Thank you, Father, because you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, Father. We thank you, Jesus, and we thank you for the privilege that we have to tithe and to sow seed. In Jesus' name, amen. So while they're passing that, I'm going to run down some announcements. We got a lot going on. I wrote it in bright red letters right there on my iPad Sunday, and I forgot to read it. <laughs> Membership class is coming up. So get prepared to throw a hand up Sunday. I'm going to ask for a show of hands uh, so we can kind of see where we're at. But we're, we're going to get one in before school starts. Um, membership here we, we we take it very seriously and when I say take it very seriously don't don't be getting all scared about what we're gonna do to you we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna love you you know what we love you whether you're a member or not but membership does have its privileges and we are hooked up on the wall together so membership class is coming up and and uh, those of you that might be watching on the World Wide web 
I'm not. I think that they can comment, right? So you'll be able to raise your hand digitally if you're sure. Uh, yes, that's right. You can. You can do the praising hands. All right. Uh, we're trying to get an idea, and uh, it's going to be uh, towards the end of this month or beginning of next. We've got a, a, a lot of stuff going on, but we're going we're gonna to get that done. Okay, so be, be ready for that. Woman to Woman is July the 14th. That is this Sunday. Ladies are always ready, right? Well, we're going to beat you to the punch, and we're going to gather as the nobleman tomorrow morning. That's right. Uh, guys, that's right. We will absolutely, we'll, we'll, we're going to prepare the house. Um, that's tomorrow morning at 630, guys. Be here. We got hot coffee. We got some hot Jesus. Great fellowship. Manly talk with manly men about manly stuff. And uh, it's good. August the 11th, Transition Sunday. That is such a special, special time to watch our our children move to that next level. Um, mm, mm, mm. It is. It's it, it's uh, it, it's something to watch a group of kids walk from double digits to be received and to renovate. Or it's just it's beautiful. It really is. So be that's coming up on the 11th and hitched July the 21st. That's a week from this coming Sunday. Yeah. So the week the Sunday after Woman to Woman hitched right here. Y'all, it's been a blessing to be together with you tonight. So be fruitful, multiply. No weapon formed against you with pro will prosper. He has commissioned his angels on your behalf. Glory to God. Have a great night.